Hello and welcome to another Friday where I talk about the characters in my books and give you a little bit more of context and history and that around the different characters I have. Today is really exciting because today we are going to talk about Murloc. So for those who may not have read the book and don't know yet, Murloc is Alexandria, our main character's uncle. He is a sorcerer. He's one of the few sorcerers that are in Torian and are one of the few people who she actually meets who, like her, have powers. So I don't have a particular artwork down of Murloc, but this is a, the best representation I can find essentially of him. He does look a lot like his son Majesti. So here's Murloc. Here's Majesti, who I do have artwork for. And so Murloc... Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm going to talk about some spoilers. I'll save them for the end. But I will warn you when you got to turn off if you haven't read The Head, The Heart, and The Air yet. So Murloc is 117 years old. The way sorcerers age in my world is different from humans. So they will grow to be about 17 or 18 years old. They'll age just like a normal human does. But once they become an adult, essentially, and have an adult body in that, they age in essentially dog years, where every seven years of a human life is equal to one sorcerer aging life. They live to be about 300 human years. And so seven human years will age them one year physically and so that means at 117 years old he looks like he's in his mid-30s which isn't really a problem I mean it's funny in that him and Majesti his son look like siblings more so than father and son despite the fact that Murloc was well into his 80s when he had or not quite into his 80s but he was well aged when he was able to have Majesti, which is fantastic. But so he is tall, he's slim, he spends most of his time in the lab, which is one of the reasons that he is rather pale. You'll find a lot of the sorcerers in the human world are very pale because rather than being outside doing things in nature, they're inside the castle, inside a lab, doing work and researching and reading and things like that. He prefers to wear his cloak, which is traditional sorcerer or garb. They wear the cloak in the color of their line, although he can't quite get that purple here, so he does wear more gray, which is just simple and easy enough to find in the world and no one here cares whether or not he wears a gray cloak or a black cloak or a purple cloak whereas in the sorcerer world they wear the cloak that is the color of their line so you can tell when you meet someone we see them from far away who you are meeting now murloc was born in the forbidden lands his son was born in the human world but he was still born in the forbidden lands and then he moved to dayton and well fled to Dayton when Victoria had a terrible nightmare that said terrible things were going to happen and that they had to go. So you don't mess with the premonition sorcerers when she said bad things are coming, off they went. And so they packed up what they could in the middle of the night and escaped the sorcerer world on a boat, taking them to the human world, where then when they arrived, Murloc got a job with the king of Dayton. So he essentially was taken in by Emmerich's grandfather, Aaron's great-grandfather, and became the sorcerer advisor to the king. So he was put in charge of helping to keep the kingdom safe and in you know, healing and like taking care of things like that. Now, because Victoria came with him, she was a gifted healer. And so she was the one who handled most of the healing type things. But Murloc was still there to put spells on things and to help in any way that he possibly could. Being a Merlin sorcerer, he does have a variety of skills. So he was able to use those for the benefit of the kingdom. Like having water power was incredibly helpful if there was ever a drought kind of thing. They could make sure that the plants and everything would still survive despite the fact that water was scarce at that time. So he, he was so successful in helping the kings that he has simply been with the kingdom since that time. He's gone through many different kings of uh, Dayton. They've all been happy to have him. He's been an advisor. He's always had the ear of the king in that, which is fantastic because he does know a lot. He's lived through a lot. He's old enough that he's been around for a while. And then now is the time where I'm going to go into a little bit of the spoilers. So if you have not read The Head, The Heart, and The Air yet, and you do not want some spoilers about the surprise things that happen, I would suggest you say thank you and leave now. Five, four, all right, so if you've read, you clearly have read The Head, The Heart, and The Air, and you also know that Murloc is the middle son. So Murloc, his older brother, and his twin brother is the more powerful of them. So Murloc managed to find himself a job in a place essentially where he was happy, he was secure, him and Victoria made sure together that they were able to protect the Dayton castles and that they could make sure that the place was safe. Morlock was incredibly bitter about having to leave their home and so he made his own place in the world where he went and got his castle made by people he essentially bewitched to build the castle for him and then went and helped the Betruger when he felt like it. When he had nothing better to do he just did what he wanted to do 
he was never on good terms with Morlock after they arrived ever again. The only way Morlock ever learned about what Morlock was up to was through Victoria. She was still loved by both of her brothers, so she would kind of play the in-between card when necessary, but honestly, Morlock could not have cared less what Morlock was up to, which is sad because, I mean, they're twins and you would think they have a bond, but Morlock was so bitter, had it not caused damage to him, he probably would have had Morlock killed after they arrived in the human world. That's how mad he was about having to leave all the sorcerers behind and come live with these wretched humans that he was so disfond of. But in the sorcerer world, a twin cannot harm another twin without that pain coming to them. So if Morlock had done anything to Morlock, he would have suffered the same injury and the same fate that his twin did, and so he had to essentially leave his brother alone. Doesn't mean he couldn't mess with his nephew and his niece, but either way, both Murloc and Morlock have always been very close with Victoria, something about being the youngest sister who always had her brothers wrapped around her finger, and so she had always had a great relationship with them. She adored Murloc, she adored Majesti, she adored Morlock and Ligari, so she was always there for her brothers and her nephews whenever they needed her until she found her Edward and had her own daughter and then kind of expected her brothers to be there for her, which may or may not have been the case depending on which brother we are referring to. But I think you both, I think you all know that Morlock absolutely was there when she needed him, whereas Morlock, not so much because that's just how he rolls. But yeah, so if you've got any questions about Murloc, let me know. I love talking sorcerers. They are so much fun. And yeah, he is from the line of Merlin and the line of Cassandra, but it's his Merlin powers that are very much his dominant power, even though they're not as powerful as, some, as Victoria or Morlocks are because he's simply the middle son. And as you learn in sorcerers, there are lines that the oldest son gets the power and the youngest son gets the power, but there unfortunately are no lines where the middle son gets the power, so... He was always kind of the weakling when it came to power in the family, but he did pretty good for himself considering. But I hope you guys have a great day and happy reading. Bye. <laughs>